Right, good morning everybody. Long time no speak. Um, I just thought, after, I haven't neglected my blog, but I haven't made a video off my blog for so long. And I just hope you're not sick of seeing all this. Um, but this is what I'm on at the minute. I've got three of these made. There's one, two, and this is a bigger one, three. Now I want to keep one of these for myself, but I want to make a few and see if they, this goes for the shop. So I'm on my third one. Um, I've been working on this page. I've got another page put together there. So I was going to put a page together on camera. Um, so basically, I've got my stitched papers that I created on the sewing machine. And I'm trying to keep the small ones much of a muchness, but I don't mind if there's pages that have almost like a bite out of them because they can be really nice when it comes to the book. So if you look at this one, there's kind of like a bite out of that, but you can see what's underneath. Um, and that again, there's a bite out of there and you can see what's underneath. So I quite like that, the irregularity of those. So that one, so if that was to go on top of there, you would see this. Uh, this isn't finished yet, that page. So if I put one together, and then the spines are very simple, I'm just literally joining them by stitching sequins on that one, in an opposite direction to the sequins on that one. And this one is just stitched together with little tabs of thread on the spine, and then three handmade ball buttons securing it again. Um, so I am kind of, not marking a spine, but being conscious of a spine and being conscious which is the foot, the turning edge and which is the spine edge when I'm doing this. So I need to actually make more pieces on my sewing machine, I think. I'm running low on certain things. So that, that would work without doing anything to it, but I might take a little bit of it off. Now these machine stitched papers, you literally just pull them apart. I apologise for dangling, the jangling. Um, oh. And then to cut these, now I would never cut these with my good scissors. I've got old embroidery scissors that are blunt. So I use that. I'm cutting the threads between the paper here. Um, and there's bound to be some paper fibres mixed in amongst all this. So that's why I wouldn't use my good scissors. Um, so that's a, a hint for you. And then, now I'm not really 100% happy about the shape of that, but if I was to put that on there, and I need to be wary of my spine. So if I was to put that on there, maybe turn it around, that could be the spinal area. And then this piece could also, I haven't got much of this left and it's really difficult to make this one, so I'm going to reduce it a little bit. As long as there's a bit of overlapping going on, so that everything's caught down, and then I will pin them together. And I use different pins for paper than I do for fabric. These are just normal dressmaking pins, but I identify by the head that these are the ones I use for paper, because pinning through paper will blunt these massively and so they wouldn't respond well to going through fabric and they won't do your fabric much good. So there, that's one page put together. So for this one, I've already got that page, now this page, now that page. Now they do have like five pages, each of these little books, and I'm thinking of making some little muslin bags to put them in. So that's three pages put together that need to be stitched. Now, you'll notice as well, bullion knots are featuring a lot in these. Um, I just think the bullion knot really complements the delicacy of the paper. Um, the loops on the edge of the pages, I just think that it enhances, really enhances. Uh, perhaps it's more evident in this one. Um, but just loops and fragility and so that's what I'm doing. And these will be left raw. I'm going to leave these raw because for me, the beauty of this paper is this, the fragility. 
um, at the edges so they'll be left like that but like I say I might make some uh, little bags for them to go in so I'll just do one volume not on paper I don't base these I'll leave the pins in um, because it doesn't take long to get round and the pins tend not to get in the way if you're careful so I'll just put a knot in my thread and I'm going to join one area with bullion knots so if I start here I do apologise about the jangling just a minute should have put a little one that might help um, so I'll just do a 35 wrap bullion knot now I am aware there's a head of a pin there and we could push it out of the way it should be okay I mean I do this all the time um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, thirty-five. And pull it through and go to the back. Okay. Now I will do that whole seam with bullion loops all the way around there okay I'll leave the no I'm not going to leave the thread attached actually I'll just fasten it off and join it again later because I don't want it to get in the way so then I decide what I'm going to actually put on here um, so I'll get my little box of tricks out that you're probably fed up of seeing now these there's that one and that one don't throw them away, don't throw anything away. And the reason is, if I put another page together, so for example, this one, I might decide I want a bit of layering going on here, so I could attach part of that to there. Don't throw anything away, okay? Um, keep it. So I'll get my little box of tricks, and I'll get that one I've just done the bullion knot on. And I'll take, and I'm always, if I get a spare few minutes, I make things ready to cut up for these little books. I need more shiny ribbon, silky ribbon pieces. So I'll just get a few things out and have a look and see if I can play replacement on these. And again, they'll be pinned on. Some of these tiny little pink ones, they're just one gingham square with French knots. Um, there's some of these are Liberty fabrics with embroidery on top. Right, so that might be enough for now. So let me just have a look at this. Now, I also like to put turned over things like tabs on the edge. Oh, there's a shiny one with a with a, 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 a web stitch now I think so there's a plain one just a bit of liberty stitched to a white backing so that would be a nice tab if I folded that over and if I put it on an edge I could put it on the opening edge so if I put that on there and I literally just stab stitch these on. Nothing fancy happens with these bits. Now I do have some paper somewhere that's got silk velvet in it that I've stitched into it. Um, here, there's some in this page. So what I like to do is emphasize the fabric in that area. I'll French knot around there probably. Um, so that's the first bit there. I really love these. I'm gonna make some more of these. So these are little snippets of ribbon with web stitches stitched onto them. Um, but they're stitched also onto a bit of white cloth so I could maybe put that down there and it's as simple as that you just get all your things out in front of you and just start doing little compositions of what lives where happily for you that pleases you aesthetically um, now then I don't know if these are a bit big uh -oh. I might have to rethink them. I might have to use them to enhance the big one. So this big one of mine I'm going to be keeping. It wouldn't suffer for having extra put in it. Although I'm saying that, I've done that already and there's no room now. But, I mean, if they could stay in there for a bigger one. I just think they might be a bit big for these. Um, 
but that's a nice one. I just like the colours. It's literally just a bit of Liberty fabric, plain, stitched onto a bit of white fabric. That would be nice there, actually. So if I move that pin... I mean, you can join all your pieces together first, your page pieces, and then put these on. It's entirely up to you. So that's three things on there. Um, I haven't got any gingham, so maybe one of these would go up there. And it's really that simple. Really, that's all you have to do. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that little chat. Just a quick snippet of how I go about these things. Um, yeah, so that's it. Now I have to stand up to turn my camera off. <laughs>